This episode of After Dark is brought to you by, well, you. If you want to support the Boss Rush Network and our family of podcasts, head on over to our Patreon at patreon.com slash Boss Rush Network. Thanks for your continued support. What's up, everyone? Welcome to Boss Rush After Dark, the alternative topical podcast for adults here on the Boss Rush Network. It's your boy, LeBron, back in the house again, and I've got I've got a squad. <laughs> you know what? We're gonna do this, we're gonna do this backwards this time. I'm gonna welcome, I'm gonna welcome back our guest this time first. Back in the house of us, Matt Keel. What's up, dude? Twice in a row. I know, man. I know, man. You're you're becoming a fixture. You're eventually gonna get a disease, I'm just saying. <laughs> hey, that's you're how you know you had. That, that's how welcome. you know you had fun. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's Some not memories one. just last. I know. Just saying. Who's 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 having fun with one of those? I yeah. When it when no, it burns, no, when you no, pee. I'm not going to no, no, kick no. shame anybody. I did. I didn't say. I didn't say that part was fun. I just said that's how you know you had fun. Mm. All right. Uh, because that is how the consequence, consequence, consequence. <laughs> All right. Well, she's she's back with us now after deciding that she did not want to be one of us for, for a week. Hey, she took a vacation. You leave her alone. I know. She took it. I know. She I did know. exactly what everyone here wishes they were doing. <laughs> That's true. That is true. That's yeah, true. It's no but, lie. It's the truest thing Corey said tonight. Stephanie, welcome home. I'm home and being very adult and snuggling with my son's Pikachu blanket because I need to feel cozy tonight. Nothing wrong with that. I need to, I need to feel cozy too. Uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, there's no way for me to feel cozy with. I'm not cozy with anybody. I'm cozy with my cat, though. <laughs> yeah. Well, wow. I got, I got she, this Yoshi. She looks so dude. Was she asleep when you just you snatched her up just now? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Yoshi. Yoshi. And, and the man, the myth, the one, the only, Corey Derrick. Welcome back, dude. Hello, Laron. I don't have anything snarky to say tonight. Looking I'm, svet, t- svet, svelt. Looking svelt, 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 svelt tonight, Corey. I don't know what that means. <laughs> please describe. I <laughs> please. This svelt. It's like you're looking you look very. You look, it's a compliment. Yeah, yes. Corey, shut up and take it. Jesus That's Christ. what she said. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. First time a woman said that to me in a long time. Yeah. Uh, she also said, stop resisting. <laughs> can't threaten me with a good time. <laughs> Quit running away. <laughs> Three pounds away, though. Nice. That's awesome. Congratulations. That's good. Seriously. That's that's good. Actually, actually, I stepped on the scale this morning and discovered I dropped twelve pounds. I don't know how I dropped twelve pounds, but twelve pounds are gone. You stop keeping gummy. Stop keeping gummy bears under your desk. Was that it? Uh, I don't know. I no, 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 no. Stop real, drinking beer. That's no, it. Real, no real, no real <laughs> talk. Like I haven't, I haven't bought. I haven't bought the, the two pound bags of gummies lately. Um, I have not bought. I've not bought. I have not bought. <laughs> bought the bought the giant tub of uh Starburst jelly beans in a in a hot minute and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, that's not hitting that's the true. dispensary, causing extra munchies. <laughs> yep. Because uh, because <laughs> beyond that, like uh, I, I it's not like I've been out working out or anything. Mm. I haven't either. If it makes you feel better, sometimes you know I, I feel like a lot of the the weight loss, at least maybe in our country, is more due to not eating something or dietary versus exercise. Like exercise is still super important, but and maybe this is a topic for another day because I've learned earlier in life that. We kind of overestimate the calories we burn in our workouts. Just one hundred percent. We 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 do we do like 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 the average the average person's the average person's meal is anywhere from from eight hundred to eleven hundred calories and stuff like that. And like a lot of the activity that we do as far as working out and stuff like that. And the forty and I'm going to be nice and say in the forty five minute workout, like 
you'd be you'd be lucky if you burn three hundred calories. Mm-hmm. And that and that doesn't matter. That doesn't matter if you're doing cardio, CrossFit, hit. It does not matter. I'm not, anyway. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a licensed uh, physical therapist or personal trainer and stuff like that. So, so don't, don't hold me to this, but I know for, I know for sure, like, you know, like with the amount of, with the amount of working on busting ass I did back when I had my personal trainer and stuff like that, like it, yeah, like, uh, I, like man, like macros in versus calories out. Like, oh my God, this is insane. Yeah. I don't want to, I don't want to think about that anymore ever again. Ever again, drink drink your water. Put a pinch of salt in it. Just just a pinch because if you put too much salt in it, you're gonna you're gonna have water blood. That's probably what that's probably what it is. Like um like that's that's probably what I lost a bunch of water weight. Mm. You know, Corey, once you hit hit it, huh, that's what she said again. Um, maintenance is just yeah, maintenance well, is 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 wonderful. It's it's not it's not my goal weight. It's the triple digit weight. Oh, that I'm three pounds away from. That's still maintenance. Getting close that's to that's amazing. Like you, 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 that's amazing that you that you that you've almost lost hundred pounds. That's amazing. Uh, and I'm not and I'm not even saying that just to be funny or patronizing or anything, man. Like it's, shit. Like it's to deal. it's to the point where the clothes that were way too small for me are now big on me. Wow. Like all the new belts I bought for my pants are now big on me. And I had to poke holes in them. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I'm not buying new belts, man. Belts are expensive. Okay. Yeah, they are. Belts are expensive. It's, and you know, the sad part is like, like, like belts seem to be really cheap quality nowadays, right? You think you're buying a really good belt and you know, like in like four months, like it's already like, like peeling and chafing and all that shit. Mm-hmm. And it's like, it's, it's like, come on guys. Like you, you have one job. Yeah. So I have been taking there. I have been taking walks at night, though, mm-hmm. um, nice. because I, feel like I should I feel like I should do that. We, but um, but also, like, I don't like just walking around at night. We like, um, I, w- I will walk around early in the morning, like before the sun comes up, but not like after the sun's gone down. Um, We have like in our kind of quote unquote neighborhood, there's only two streets. And then at the end of our street, there's a like a cul-de-sac and there's there's a walking trail back in the woods behind the cul-de-sac. Mm-hmm. So that's that it just kind of goes in one big loop um, if you follow it the correct way. So you've, you've walked that trail in the dark. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm not like some tiny person. I'm that's not even, that's not that's not even what I'm getting at, man. Like uh, like like mm, like motherfuckers get attacked by 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 cougars and mountain lions, and I don't mean I don't mean like grown ass women cougars. Cougars. I saw I saw an app on in, on Instagram that was uh, that was um, advertised to me called um, Cougar Dates. <laughs> And um, wait, why is it advertising to you? You're you're a married man. Like, well, like, I don't what's, know. What's what? What have you been? His doing phone like, probably heard someone at? say it. I don't know, man. Cougar, I... cougar, cougar, cougar. Hmm. Actually, so. question: Like, am I already eligible to be considered a cougar? I think thirty six if... is the beginning. Oh fuck! No, I thought, no I, thought that, I thought it was I, I thought it was more middle aged women. Like, yeah, I thought it'd be like mid forties. I don't know. Yeah, mid forties, yeah. Earliest, yeah. I I was taking a shot in the dark here. Okay, but like, it's all. It wouldn't it be more relative though? Because even though I'm thirty five now, which doesn't seem like the older stereotype of a cougar, but if I were to gross ever date a twenty year old, ugh, I mean that's a big difference. Wouldn't that be cougar? level or is it still you need to be like in your almost 50s uh i don't i i i don't know but i mean you know that, that's not that's like that tiktok to like all to to all the to all the old people out there you know, people born in the 90s you know mm. <laughs> are you calling old people born in the 90s no, that's what the that's no, that's the that's the thing that's the that's the thing on social media. Like they're oh, I mean, are you are you are you talking about people that were, are them saying people that were born in the late nineteen hundreds? Yeah, they're, okay, yeah, they're calling they're calling us old. Yeah, well, they say if you were born in the late nineteen hundreds, 
and <laughs> they're like, they're like people born in like ni- the, in the eighties were born in the late nineteen hundreds, and then I mean, I mean, then, then he yeah, waits like, a minute and says, "Fuck these kids." <laughs> I mean, yeah, right? Yeah, because I mean, I mean, for real, like you know, like where did where did hurt a guy's feelings? You know, I was born in the last quarter of of, of the twentieth century. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, same, but it, but also like. Actually, it doesn't hurt my feelings that much because number one, I don't look like I'm pushing fifty. So I haven't you know, there's started that. feeling old yet, Matt. Because I, you're I not like, old. You're, I feel, I feel you're, old you're after certain really activities. Old man, child. <laughs> Wait, what'd you say, Corey? <laughs> I said Matt's secretly a twelve-year-old man, child. He's not. <laughs> yeah. He's not forty-five or however old you're supposed to be. No, I'm not forty-five. I'm actually I'm, not forty-five. I'm older than you. <laughs> No, you are not. <laughs> My body's telling me otherwise. It's like, so I'm tired a lot, but I've well, been baseline tired for like 30 years now. Well, based off of what I learned last week, it, it, you and I, you and I, Matt, are the actual resident old old people on this on, on this podcast. Yep. And you know what? I am the race is on to that AARP membership. Am I right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I am not. I, I, I am not upset in, in, in the slightest. You actually, actually, I found out. I found out you don't have to be like middle aged to get into AARP. No, you don't. Like, stop that's... saying that because then we're going to start getting advertisement advertisements for it. <laughs> no, I'll just get single Corey's gra- good single grand 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 for AARP Cougar date. <laughs> no, it's going to be single grannies in your area. Oh, oh God. Oh, yeah. God. Uh, <sighs> gross. Single grannies. I'm not even going to. Fannies. I'm not even going to make it there, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> you know what? I, I, I'm pretty I sure it's Stephanie's the only one that takes care of herself enough to get relatively close to there. <laughs> so. I used to, I used to say that, too. Like, uh, like, 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 I used to say that I wasn't that I'd. I, didn't see myself getting past a certain age because my because my dad my my dad passed away from a heart attack when he was forty one and stuff like that and um and it, like it really it really stunted like my my mental image of like of like what growing old looked like you know um so like for, so like yeah like I thought I thought by the time I hit forty two years old like you know that was that was a wrap you know mm-hmm. um and here and here I am like you know like uh, like almost a year away from fifty. You made it, Laurent. Good job. Did I make it, though? I don't know. Did I make it? I don't think any of us made it. I think we're all just existing. If you survive day. another day, you've made it. Hey, you just bought you just bought a house, dude. You, you, you're making it better than I am. Yeah. Am I? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Man, I wish. Yeah, but you know what? Before we before we before we continue with that facet of the conversation, let me just say real quickly out there: if you'd like to support Boss Rush After Dark and the Boss Rush Network, head over to our Patreon at patreoncom slash Network and get started. With access, you get you get access to this show two weeks early and ad free, as well as other perks like early access to our other podcasts. Uh, you also get voting rights and more at the tier that's right for you. Again, that's patreoncom slash Network. Uh, if you can't contribute financially, it's no big deal. Your or your viewership and your listenership are enough for us. If you're watching the video, please subscribe to the channel, leave a thumbs up on this video, and hit that notification bell so you can be notified when new episodes go live. If you're listening on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, leave our show a five star review and a nice oh I'm sorry a five star rating and a nice review. It really helps with our visibility and our discoverability. But remember, you can always find new episodes, articles, reviews, and more over on our website at bossrush.net. Now, let's continue that conversation. Yeah, yeah, I feel like I feel like I feel like honestly, I did not pass that litmus test of like what adulting should be like, you know, and stuff like that. You know, like I'm running I'm running a room, I'm running a room out at, you know, at, uh, from I'm 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 a roommate in, in someone else's house, for example. Um like you know, like there's there's things happening. Like uh, like you know, me and my boyfriend are in the run up to like moving in and living together and stuff like that. Um, so I'll be moving out of here soon and stuff like that. But yeah, like I feel like some of that adulting stuff. Like I've I've never bought a house. Like I've I've thought about buying a house. You know, I thought I was in line to buy a house at certain points and just that didn't happen. Stuff like that. Uh, like 
I was in I was in a I was in a meeting today and a financial advisor was talking about like annuities and getting stuff set up for retirement and it, and it hit me I'm like I'm like shit I'm like I'm I'm literally 15 years away from retirement age you know uh, and uh and guess what <laughs> there ain't enough for me to retire off of right now <laughs> yeah so I mean like so I commend you I commend you guys that you know are out there you know like 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 Corey, you just purchased a house. Like, you know, you've got, you've got, you've got a family, you know, started you too, Steph. Like you've like, you've got your own home. Like you've got, you've, you've got a family, uh, Matt, you too. And stuff like that. And here I am some single ass dude. Well, not well, shit, not single. God, I hope, I hope, hope the boyfriend didn't hear that. <laughs> that, that will be, a, well, in this case, a, single just means not married. It doesn't mean you're not. Yeah, like, yeah exactly. Yeah. Because like, that's my, that's, that's literally what the marital status for the, as far as the government's concerned right now, I'm not married. Yeah. I mean, whenever yeah, I said, I, I never understood that when I said I was single and like, I'm, I wouldn't say it. I wouldn't say I was single, like in a way to like, I'm single and ready to mingle. It would be like, I'm, oh, I'm, I'm a single dude where, and a girlfriend would get angry about that. Like, I didn't say I'm not dating. I'm saying, I'm saying I am, I, I am a single man because yeah. we don't live together. We're not married. So technically I'm single. Am I, yeah, am I, am I looking for someone else to date? No, because you are enough right now. <laughs> you are enough. <laughs> yes. That's, that's all I'm, that's all I'm saying. I feel, I, I don't know, like certain days, certain days, if you catch me on the right day, so, sometimes I'll wake up and be like, damn, did I just fuck up somewhere? You know? Yeah. We all fucked up. It's fine. Uh-huh. I mean, I went into healthcare, and part of me thinks I fucked up. Any hoozle. Oh, that reminds me. Speaking of going into things, I have something to tell you, but I can't say it here. I have to tell you when we're to stop recording. Then why'd you why'd you even blurb it? Because I yeah. need you guys to remind me, because I'll forget in five minutes. Just now, it's all I'm going to be thinking about for the no, 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 no. Type it in the chat. Remind me to say what I need to say. Hold on, yeah. Hold on, Laurent. Keep swimming. Just keep swimming. The Futurum Group. Yep. Wait, wait, wait. Is wait? Is she's part of the recording? We're resuming. Resumed. Yeah, but yeah, you just can't like blurb that stuff out because you're gonna you're gonna whip the audience up into a frenzy. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, Corey, if you're the reason why we get our first bad review, man, because like you, you, you just going all willy nilly, you know, uh, on, 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 on the recordings and stuff like that. It is. If your it, first bad review is Corey said something that he couldn't say to the audience, <laughs> but he wanted to tell the host, if that's your first bad review, you're fine. Okay, look look at the industry. Look at the industry we're in. Like, like if like if they introduce microtransactions into a game that people don't think that should have microtransactions, guess what happens to the review rating? I mean, I've been I anytime I've had a talk with anybody about Hell Divers too, everyone's like, I don't like pay to win games. I'm like, it's not freaking pay to win. Well, then how come you have to buy stuff? I'm like, you don't have to buy stuff. Yeah, from with, what I heard, see, from what I heard, everything that everything that you can pay for, you wind up getting just naturally. Yeah, you can just you can you don't have to pay for any of it. In fact, if you just do missions and get through the first thing, you unlock enough to pay for the next thing. And then if you do that, you unlock to pay for the next thing. Yeah. The only reason I've bought things in that is because because you're a greedy to, bitch. No, I no, oh, I did that. I'm like, I wanted to give, I want to give Arrowhead money. In fact, I'll say this right here and now. Okay, okay, you know what? That's that's if no. There was, if there was any studio that I would ever want to work for in like a PR sense, it would be Arrowhead. I like a lot of game developers, but the one that has my heart, Arrowhead Studios. I would move to Sweden and figure it out for them. Just saying. I take it back. You're not a greedy bitch. I'm not a greedy bitch. No. <laughs> no. Demanding, yes. Demanding, like, yes. <laughs> I feel like mom and dad are fighting again. I'm happy to be the mom in this scenario. Oh, really? Now I'm. Oh boy. After dark time, 
Hey, hey, dark hey, talk. <laughs> hey, hey, you know, whenever Matt's on After Dark, like all sorts of flirting. We know. I, 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 mean, yeah. I don't even know. Next why, time, what? Next time, Stephanie and I are just going to go to bed and you're going to. Hey, oh, man, the LeBron and Matt show. Let, yeah. Let's go. Let, let's See, the go. problem there. Me the too. Problem, the, what? <laughs> wow, I just feel really left out right now. I don't know what just happened. I don't know what. The, I, I had a thought, and then I heard Stephanie go meet. The twosome, like, what's the, happening? The twosome, okay. the, the no, twosome became said, a threesome. No, I said love you too sarcastically because uh, I feel oh. left out. So, yeah, Corey and I will go. Okay, num- number one, Corey yeah. said you said Corey put you in the corner. We did not. Yeah, we did not. Yeah. Uh, before the audience gets any ideas separately, everybody, Stephanie and I will be sleeping separately. <laughs> oh, then why do I have this gigantic bed that will fit all of us? Why do I have this? I don't know. My couch is lying to the audience, Corey. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, we we all four of us would be such an awesome cuddle puddle. Jeez, oh, yeah, where would fun. I be? It feels very sweaty already. Wherever you I don't want know to where we're at. Where do you want to be? Like, <laughs> I'm a one at a time kind of guy. <laughs> Coward. See, see, no sense of adventure. No <laughs> sense of adventure. No, I had my adventure, and it's a lot of work, and I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can always buy a strap on and assist. Woo! Ooh. See, Stephanie just bringing it all to the table. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. So hold on. Wait, Stephanie, have you not have you not been in the conversation where I said like like I like I'm not a person for pegging, which which is really which is really wild considering like the sexual activities I get down on. Like I'm I'm oh, that seems like something you're totally into, Leron. Like, yeah. No, 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 no. Everybody has to have the equipment, like like naturally as part of their biology for, 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 for it to happen with me. Good. Sounds exclusionary, <laughs> if you ask me. No, 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 no. In my, in, in my head, in my head, something can go wrong if not everybody's feeling like the same type of sensations. If that makes any sense. Basically, what I'm trying to say is so, over. Basically, what I'm trying to say is the, the, the rap scallion in my head has some things to say, but it, they won't be helpful. So I'm just gonna say I get what you're saying because I guys. Yeah. Yeah. It yes. doesn't all have to be sexual. Like we can have that massive bed where we all sleep in kind of like Willy Wonka and the chocolate factory. Remember where all the relatives slept in the same bed? <laughs> we'll just be all old and decrepit together in bed. <laughs> look, look, all I'm trying all I'm trying to say is some some Then I'll jump up and go, because I got a golden ticket. <laughs> All I'm saying is some super adventurous lady is not going to be like, oh, I got this big motherfucker today and like and like go to work and then just realize uh, like I we need to call 911 because I, I something happened. You know, that's all I'm saying. What happened? We need to go through this now. <laughs> we can always reattach the colon. No big deal. Yeah, they, they do that all the they, time they, before lunch. Like, it's fine. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. The shenanigans I have we a, humans get into. I have, a, I, have a, I have a I have a I have a weird hang up. Yes, I do butt sex, but like er, but okay. everybody has it. Everybody has to have all the equipment to do it to do it naturally. <laughs> it's just this whole just sound. Corey just, Corey just heavy side like like nobody's business just now. <laughs> <laughs> I just man, it just sounds like a lot of prep and a lot of fluffing and it honestly is a lot of prep it, it's it, like it is it's like it's like an actor when they sit in the makeup chair for four hours for a 40 minute shoot all right i mean that just seems like a i mean it's like it's like monster hunter it's all in the preparation someone's hunting monsters um the uh, beast is getting slain yeah <laughs> If you want to see how you can become a Patreon producer, head on over to patreon.com slash boss rush network. The Patreon producers for this month are Adriel Munger, Austin Campbell, Celeste Roberts, Christian S. Sana Dierig, Francisco Santilan, Matthew Keel, and Todd Oxtra. Thanks for your continued support of the Boss Rush Network.
hit him with a hammer to the face. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, so we have all some questions. The... <laughs> all, all, all I'm saying is I'm very qualified to single-handedly handle reptiles. What? Okay. It was a weird online course that he got a certification from. We don't need to talk about it. Corey, <laughs> help. Help me. Um, no one will save you now. <laughs> so, Stephanie, how's... Uh... <laughs> wow. <laughs> Captain Smalltalk strikes again. <laughs> this is why I'm alone. Look, he's nervous, too. He's got his arms crossed. He's so nervous right, he's so oh. stop right now. My... I'm doing this because my basement is cold because it's 35 degrees here. Then wear a yeah. shirt. I, my, the one I usually wear on the show is in the washing machine, and I don't like Lies. That. Lies. Corey's just getting cocky. Soon he'll be the one that's wearing sleeveless shirts. I don't own... Oh, well, that's a lie. I do own sleeveless shirts, but they're usually undershirts. They're, all, they're about to be over shirts, my friend. <laughs> Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> I'm too tired for this shit. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely fan questions. Thank you. Okay, so for first safety. up, we have Yari with some, with several. We yeah, love you, they, Yari. Yari. Is the bomb. Yari, are you okay? I'm worried about you. Why? Uh, they are just, uh, doing a lot of school stuff I, from what I've gathered from the discord. And uh, then, then they ask questions like these. So. <laughs> uh, like. Dot, dot, oh, dot. Am I, okay. Uh, which. And so <laughs> Yari has provided all of our questions tonight. Uh, which X would you would call you their crazy X? And what did you do? shit um mm. there's not enough time in this episode to go over that yeah i can't think of one that wouldn't uh, oh I, I, oh this is this uh, i can answer this question easily um the last the wrong. last the, the last woman that i actively tried to date and stuff like that um i Corey, i told i told you uh, i told you some of this story uh the last woman i dated you know like we're we were we were both bisexuals we were both bisexuals at the time you know like i technically i'm still a bisexual i'm not sure what her status is because i haven't talked to her in years but you know uh like like uh like like we started dating we actually got into a relationship and stuff like that and um and it was just one of those situations where she couldn't reconcile the fact that she was dating a bi dude, even though like I had no problems that she was a bi woman and stuff like that. So, you know, like just all sorts of just like really just like always questions and all that stuff. And, you know, um, and then, um, and then so we, so she broke up with me, um, you know, despite me not doing anything, you know, she broke up with me and then, um, and then because like, we didn't work in the same place, but we just worked in the same vicinity, uh, you know, like, like, and stuff like that. And it was just, it was just one thing after the other. And then one day I just like kind of snapped on her because I was like, look, like you and I are not together anymore. Like when we're, we're not fucking, we're not doing anything and all that stuff. And you need to chill the hell out. All of a sudden I was the crazy person because like, I, you know, just like put my foot now. You know, now, yeah, there was a little, you know, um, I, w I would say like I wasn't the most level headed person, you know, as I was as I was laying all this out to her and stuff like that. But at the same time, you know, I was like, we we hadn't we hadn't been dating in almost a year now. And like and like you're still affected by like this mess that you caused. <laughs> so, yeah, I definitely be the crazy ex because normally I'm not the crazy person. I'm usually the, I'm usually the level headed person, but this is like, I always say like Gemini's are not crazy until you do something to make us crazy. Sure. I, I, I definitely have been a crazy ex for one relationship. Thankfully, I, I feel like the rest I've been very level headed, but this is the one where I really kind of, it was the, I thought it was the one he was the one and our circumstances, I definitely over romanticized the situation and the way it ended, so to speak, probably is what kind of caused me to snap and be the crazy ex. And that was the whole, 
you know, I'll never get back with my ex. That's a bad idea. I don't, I never want to get back with my ex. And then one day I found out that he secretly got back with his ex without oh. breaking it off with me first. And, um, I made a lot of unhealthy decisions, uh, you know, and we kind of had an unhealthy relationship anyway. And the create the, where the crazy ex part comes from is I insisted that we be friends but, you know, like subconsciously, it's just because I was hoping for yeah. a relationship later. And what would happen is we'd get, get be all hunky-dory, but then when we'd, we'd all go out as a group or something, i drink too much. And then i start either sobbing uncontrollably or getting really angry and at him. Uh, so I, I can understand that how that would be come off as the crazy ex because, you know, hey, let's be friends. And then I turn around and start crying and screaming that he's a POS. So... <laughs> I'm not proud of it. I, I am very, yeah, I'm very not proud of how I behaved, but I, I learned from it. You know, I learned what's acceptable behavior and what is not acceptable behavior. Uh, Trust me, if, if we were still talking, I would apologize. I'd be like, listen, dude, I'm sorry. <laughs> I wasn't in my right mind. My bad. And, and do you know what we call that? We call that growth. Yeah. Oh, man. Let's see. For me, so I guess there would be th- three examples. Although I don't or he just left much. a whole bunch of jilted lovers in his wake. <sighs> man, from between the ages of like 27 and 30. Uh, no, that's that's too late. That's too early. Well, late. I don't know. Early 20s. We'll just say early 20s. I'm not sure. Uh, so... There was, I feel really bad about, I want to preface this story that I feel really bad about this. Okay. Oh, this is going to be good. If he, year pre- old if, he, if he leads, if he leads with an apology, this is going to be good. Mm-hmm. Okay. I just want to, I want to preface this. That I feel really bad that I did this to this person, but there was there. Everybody has that person that they know. Like, loves 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 them but you don't really like them back but you know if you need someone they're going to be there mm-hmm. um and so there's this one girl right when i so the first time was i graduated high school and the girl i was dating at that time broke up with me like <laughs> right before prom and it was not a whatever. Uh, but this uh, this girl and I started hanging out afterwards and like. She was cute and fine and fun and whatever, but she, like. It just wasn't what I wanted. But she was there, right? Mm-hmm. And so we kind of did this thing over the summer. And when I went to move to Columbus, like we were still. I don't know. Basically, I was using her to feel better about myself. Mm -hmm. And so. I ended up driving home one weekend and ending it with her, and she was really upset. Understandable, right? Whatever you break up with someone, you're somebody's going to be upset, most likely both of you, but one of you, at least. Um, And then when I moved home from Columbus, I had just broken up with the girl that I was dating there. She had, um, well, she started seeing someone else. We'll just put it that way. And, uh, I came home and, uh, I ended up calling her (laughs) and we did this thing again. Oh, for a summer. Oh man. So you couldn't even let You couldn't even let her move on. Nope. And then, um, then I just kind of like, ghosted her um which is probably worse yeah dirty dirty boy (sighs) yeah and then um after another relationship i did the same thing same girl yeah Mm. Mm. oh my god this Mm. yo Uh, (laughs) i'm not saying i lost respect for you but damn man well yeah it's (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not. Yeah, I. 
<laughs> I've done that too. I'm, I'm yeah. not going to sit here. I, yeah. I'm not okay, sitting here worst. bragging that I'm that I'm. Oh, no, 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 we know you're not bragging. <laughs> we know this. Yeah. We, we know this. Uh, I'm so, okay. I, I guess I was projecting because I'm like the worst thing I've ever done to somebody is uh, is I've thrown somebody a a, a, a a pity fuck before. You know, I thought you were going to go that one, route. But one whoa. person. <laughs> Yeah, that, that, yeah, I've done that. There was also a point in my, well, we, this doesn't answer the question, so I'm just going to leave it for a different day. Um, but also the girl I dated before my wife, I think we would both call each other crazy because mm-hmm. we both like love hated each, each other mm-hmm. and it extended the relationship way longer than it needed to be. And yeah. so, uh, yeah, that was, um, <laughs> yeah, that was, that was a crazy relationship that, um, apparently my old Facebook profile still exists and my profile picture is with her. So, oh, whoops, did not know that that existed. I thought I was like, I don't want to see any of this, so I'm just going to delete it, but it doesn't delete. <laughs> no, it uh, and i don't know what email address is attached to that account either so i can't like go in so and you can't it. even get rid of it nope. so uh yeah anyways don't search that <laughs> well there's a lot of pictures in that facebook page that i'm like oh please just go away <laughs> yeah no it's there forever mm-hmm. so i have i have uh between my marriages I like I got divorced in we separated in 2014. It was finalized in 2016. I started dating while we were separated for the simple fact that I didn't want to talk to my friends. Hmm. Um who yeah, what's up? I'm just going to say, I don't think if, if you, if two people are on their way to a divorce, they know it's like not getting reconciled. And one, I don't understand. I don't, I don't understand the people who get bent out of shape of that. The fact that the, the other, the other outgoing spouse was dating somebody during the separation. Um, I think so. That wasn't really my, uh, Deanna is not the, I, I feel like she would call me crazy for a couple of reasons, but I don't think I would be her crazy ex. Okay. Um, simply because we're, we still talk, we're still friends. Um, Hmm. and you know, we're not like, we don't go out to dinner anymore or anything like that, but like every so Uh often she'll like, we have a group text with a mutual friend and we'll chat in there every so often. No, no big deal. Um, but when I started, I started dating because I didn't want to talk to our mutual friends about her. Mm-hmm. Like I, di- I didn't, I, and that, that's my, that's probably my, that's probably a, a misstep on my part because I feel like some folks would probably want some closure or want some insight into why things happened the way they did. Uh, but I didn't want to do that because I, di- I was dead set on not playing any friends against her. So I didn't want, I didn't want that situation to arise. I didn't want that possibility. So I started dating just to keep the social muscles limber. So I could just sit down across from somebody and talk. Sometimes funny feeling that I already know how this narrative is going to turn out. (laughs) That ended up going to some bad places, like right off the bat. I have some, I had some great dates that way. Not, not going to lie. Like there, there's, there was a girl, her name is Abby. She was older. She had two daughters. We talked, we talked for like weeks. We only ever went on one date, but like we talked for a very long time. And I think it was like, I, we were friends on Instagram, saw her fall in love with someone new, someone she's married to now. Like, good for her. I'm happy for Abby. Abby's doing great. Um, but a couple of them, it was the same situation. Like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to say that I was right. I'm not going to brag. I'm not a good breaker upper and I don't know how to do it. 
and part you of mean, the, when you say break when you say you're not a good breaker up you mean you're you're i you're, don't know how i don't know how to do it i, I don't, you don't know you don't know, you I, don't know how to be the person that i don't know how to yes that but gotcha. there, were, there were several things that should have ended like after a couple of dates but they went for months and like i just took it like i'm just yeah i guess i'm just here um been there there and i'm like and then eventually i would just I would just not necessarily snap, but like it would be a case of like uh, one girl had my key and would just come on over whenever because she lived kind of far away, but worked in Philly. So she would just stop on over and I would never have the balls to set boundaries. I'd be like, look, I'm, I'm this ain't it tonight. Like just, I, I need my space. I could never do that. And then eventually, because I couldn't do that, I eventually just went as long as I could and then just like, I need my key back. And that was it. Mm. I need my key back because I need some space and I'll call you. And I never called. Mm. Um, there was. I wish I could relate. You know I'm, I'm always the one who's getting dumped. So I there, wish I could there, relate. You know what sucks is when you give a key to a girl and then you go in and half your stuff's missing. <laughs> Yeah, I never had that happen, thank heavens. Because I, re- I realized after, I'm like, wow. And then I was paranoid. I was so paranoid that I had the apartment I was living in change the lock. Because I was like, <laughs> I, I'll i pay for it. Don't worry about it. He, you, here's the key. But like, I don't know what this person's capable of, and I don't want to give them the opportunity. Um, There was one we went on – we I don't remember which because I met I, I started dating just on apps um because I was I'm not the I'm not the one who can like say hey send her a drink and tell her it's from me and see what happens uh, I'm not that confident in myself at all um there was one we met we had a really great first date to the point where we kind of started and then we ended up back at one of our places. And then we never really went on a date again after that. We would call each other in with the idea of going out on a date, but we would just end up at one of our places, not leave, order pizza and have a nice time. And that was really, I'm not going to lie. That was really fun, but it was kind of what Corey was describing. I was, she was just there. And I was totally, I was, I was totally a toxic asshole in that regard. I'm not going to even, not even going to try and sugarcoat it. Like I was an absolute dick in this, in this case. (laughs) Um, Okay. I can relate to that. Cause I, cause like, cause like I have, I, I am guilty of leading, leading people on, like making them think something more is there. Yeah. And there, there, for a long time. And this, this, this lasted through like not necessarily full relationships, but like possible relationships. Like I would start, I would go on another date and that seemed like a thing, but then it just wouldn't, it would fizzle out after another one or two. But I always knew she was there. I could always call her and she could always call me, but I think she thought it was going to be serious. And I definitely knew it wasn't. And when eventually she said, Hey, I can't do this anymore. She probably looks at me and goes, yeah, he was not a good one. I don't know if crazy would be the thing, but like I was, de- I was definitely an asshole to her and I feel bad about that. Um, but yeah, that's probably, there's probably others that like girls I dated in high school that would probably still call me their crazy ex because who knows how to date in high school? Nobody. Mm. I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> yeah. I don't care who says they know. You don't. Yeah. You liars. Don't um, <clears throat> but yeah. Do we want to go to the next question or do we want to wait for Corey to come back? Uh, mm. That's why is this question here? <laughs> because it's awesome. Yeah. I say let's exactly. start because we all answered the first round and then we can start with any one of us and then. Okay. We- yeah. All right. Steph, so- you want to read this one? Or Matt? Yeah, or I don't. Yeah, whoever wants to read it, uh, go ahead, Steph. Or, 
Okay. So, dun dun dun, dun. Fuck, Mary kill question. Mario, Luigi, Wario. Explanations are necessary. Kill okay. Mario. He's a basic bitch. I, well, yeah, I was, I was going to say, how do we, how do we want to start this? How do we, how do we want to start this? Do we want to each go around like saying w- w- which which one we'd kill, then go yeah. do another round saying married, and then say, mm-hmm. okay, all right, we can do that. All right, uh, well, Matt, since you since you kill Mario, up, basic bitch, fuck him. Guess what? I would have say, said the same thing. Can you imagine like doing it with Mario and he's going, what? Uh, I'm a kill Mario. I'm, I'm gonna say kill. I'm gonna say kill Luigi because I cannot stand the way he jumps. I I I I never know, like. He's got that hang time. You know that that's gonna translate <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> I don't know, man. Like the flutter kick jump. I, I, I player I, two knows how to put in work. Just saying. <laughs> yeah, you don't date someone by their ability to jump. Come on, man. <laughs> it's a bad okay. for Stephanie. Come on. <laughs> So okay. Next, um, since we'll wait for Corey to come back, so Mary. Let's see. I would marry Luigi because he's a sweetheart, and he's a superior Mario brother. Who would you? Marry? The only way, the only way I'm marrying Luigi is, is if it's actually the Charlie Day version of Luigi from the Mario Brothers movie. That's the only way because I because I I have a I have a crush on Charlie Day. I don't know why I have a crush on him. I think I'm marrying Luigi as well. Mm-hmm. For the same okay. thing I just said, player two knows how to put in work. Yeah. Whereas, fuck, yeah, definitely Wario, because it seems like a crazy-ass time, but definitely yeah. nothing I want to stick to. He's going to be That's, that yeah. crazy person that'll give you the good time in the sack. Just wah, 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 wah and you know. I can, see, I can, I can agree, I can agree with that one. Like, yeah. so... So I guess I I guess I'm killing Luigi like mar- marrying Mario because I mean like you know if anything like he knows that he knows how to fix the pipes. I uh, I mean he's a stable basic bitch I guess but like not nah, killing Mario. Okay, Corey, your turn. Yeah. Fuck Mary, kill Mario, Luigi, or Wario. Explanations needed. We're killing Mario because I'm tired of Mario. Hell um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, I feel like I feel like Wario is annoying enough to be like fun for like a night and then you just get him out. There yeah. you go. Uh, and then you marry Luigi because he's he's the he's he's the nice one. Player two knows how to put in work. Look at there you go. Ding, ding, ding. Look at, ding, you, ding. Guys. Look at you guys being simpatico. Like I was flipped on the on, on the on the merry kill. I was flipped. Two peas, three peas. How many are there of us? I don't know. In a pod. Get me out of here. I don't know. What I'm cast. <laughs> Next question. Next question. Who's who wants to? Okay, last one from Yari. What is the funniest porn you've seen? If it's not lemon stealing whore, I need explanations. What the hell is lemon stealing whore? I've never yeah, I don't know that one. I've, I've seen a lot. Of, I've seen a lot of porn. I've seen a lot of porn, but I I don't recall this one. I, I can you know tell what? I'm not oh go ahead Corey uh no you go ahead you go no I was gonna say I, I haven't really watched a ton of funny porn I think I should just like check out the funny category in Pornhub and check it out because I think the only porn I I found funny was just because the guy was making like really funny noises and saying really silly stupid words so I, I couldn't take it seriously but that's not really funny I guess can we just talk about how like awful and just not arousing man grunting is in porn. Oh, 100%. It just, it just sounds so fake and like they're trying too hard, which. Okay. Well, you know, I'm, but, mad. I'm mad. You can find memes of the, of the lemon stealing horse. I, uh, I don't know if these are funny, but the, <laughs> the X-Men and the Ninja Turtles parody porns are pretty, uh, We'll say. It seems like it would be weird. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, the Ninja Turtles one is weird. The X Men one actually, the X Men one actually has like a real plot though. Nice. <laughs> They're just fucking in it. So. 
I so, want to check out the Game of Thrones related one. I haven't seen that yet. Game of Boners. So is that the name of it? I don't know. It just sounds like it should be though. If it's in, not, somebody messed up. In developing an appreciation of the cinema, uh, you always get led to a decade in American Hollywood known as the seventies. Ah, uh, and the seventies is when you got you had times wild enough that porn hit mainstream theaters and was reviewed by critics. Yeah. Yeah. I hate it. Um, <laughs> like Deep Throat was actually considered to be a decent film despite wow. being despite being a porn. Um, well, you know, it's all about the method acting with the Deep Throat, man. You got to, you know. You know, see you're being you're being I see what you're doing, but like <laughs> <laughs> to 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 see Roger E to read Roger Ebert's review of Deep Throat is kind of a wild time. <laughs> um, at least I'm pretty sure he reviewed it. Anyway, there... as, a, as the movie buff here, Matt. I mean, you're, okay. you're gonna know. I'm I'm gonna know. Okay, <laughs> like as, that that person's the fucking Jared Leto Joker of the <laughs> porn industry. <laughs> Got it. Um, but I feel like the funniest ones aren't necessarily actually porn. Like Beyond the Valley of the Dolls, it's a Russ Meyer skin flick, so it's lots of lots of tits. Mm-hmm. But it's not necessarily like action. It's not. It's, it's not necessarily down in it, getting down. Fucking, you know. So it's like um, softcore. <laughs> basically, yeah. Like Skinamax is built off the legacy of Beyond the Valley of the Dolls. Mm-hmm. Um, but like that film is actually kind of funny, and there's a lot of nudity in it. Uh, but like, also there are there are arty takes, arty farty takes on the porn and on the on the idea of porn. And one from the seventies is called Behind the Green Door. It's I know been, that one. I know about, that one. It's been about 20 years since I've seen it. And I don't know if it's funny, but the ideas that are in that movie, you should probably check out if you are into film at all. What's um, it called? But beyond or behind? Behind the green, the green door. Okay. <clears throat> um, and then and then yeah any 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 late night skinamax film from the 90s was immediately hilarious just because of how dumb every character in it was but like none of none of those were ended up being arousing mm. <laughs> like i remember one this woman came home with a dude but the woman was like staying at her sister's house and like her sister and her husband were not happy about this arrangement. And I just remember her coming in. She's like, Oh, Hey, this is Johnny. He's a size 12. And then like the husband is like, who is this guy? And then the sister's like, it's Johnny. He's a size 12. I'm like, That's, <laughs> like, like I get what you're trying to say here, y'all, but it's just, the joke is not funny. It's too obvious. Yeah. Uh, I, mm. Mm. but also like a a really a really funny one this really isn't a porn either but it's the porn you watch in the big lebowski if you've Mm. ever seen that movie nope like i've seen the big lebowski but uh i where julianne moore shows uh julianne moore shows um jeff bridges like the porn of like her father's like vanity wife oh. starring a man named Carl Hungus, which is hilarious. Yes. Okay. Now, now, now I remember. This guy with a thick German mm. accent comes in. He's like, I'm here for dying a cobble. And, <laughs> and then like, Oh, the TV's over there. And he's just, he look, oh, it's, it's honestly look up that clip. It's fucking hilarious. <laughs> I don't know, man. I think we should have like a part two of this topic where and we all need to go and watch intentionally funny porn and report back. Yeah. Yeah, that seems like a. Yeah. 
All right, I would be doing I would be doing all the uh, all the all all the queer uh, listeners out there a disservice if I didn't if I didn't mention the line right in front of my salad. That's all. That's nice. all. I'm gonna leave it at. Nice so, line in front of my salad. No, no, not in front of my right in front of my salad. Line right in front of my salad. I think you're referring to a single word. Yeah, uh, no, no, word? no. That's 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 the line. That's the line. The right in front of my salad. Hmm. Add some dressing to that salad. <laughs> Yikes! Well, yeah, like this rock band, yeah, jelly yeah, or like, syrup. Yeah, like so, for yeah. syrup. So, so, all of our listeners out there, if you if you know the reference, like comment comment when this video goes live or when this audio podcast debuts. I uh, I want to go back to something Matt said, and then we can go because it okay. is getting late. But you said there was I kind of forgot, but you were talking about. A movie with a lot of a lot of tits in it. Can I just yeah. can I ha- can I say an unpopular opinion? Sure. I'm not like a big fan of like, you know, like, I don't know, huge, huge tits. Just not just it's kind of like I'm not either. I, think, not, I just want to say something more controversial. Like you're not a big you're not a big fan of like full frontal in movies. Maybe it's like, I don't know, like for me as a, a f- a cis female i'm really shocked to hear it i always thought like the bigger the boobs the better no there are definitely those dudes out there but like it's i don't that's just it's never been a turn on for me i like i I, I like boobs but like when they get like obscenely large Mm -hmm. I, i you start losing me yeah, there, 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 are, there is a such thing as too yeah. much. Once they don't, yeah. once they stop fitting in your hand, it's too much. When I worked at Sam's Club briefly, there was a, a 70 something year old greeter. Her name was Mary and she was Ooh. lovely. And one day in the break room, we had the porno channel on and she walked what? in. Yeah, because we could fuck with the direct TV. Um, she walked in and saw her. She's like, oh, what channel is this? And my coworker, Brad, is like, it's the porn channel, Marion. And she and she looks at the TV and she's like, see, they're doing it all wrong. Those tits are too big. Like anything more than a mouthful, you're just wasting space. Am I right? And I'm, I'm like, you go, Marion. She is the coolest person yeah, ever she, now. I aspire to be like her. She was amazing. Um, and she's ultimately right. Like, yeah, like what's the deal with like when I was when I had first like hit puberty someone could have you know globes on their chest and i might have been yes that's the one for me because i didn't know any better um but now like i'm more of an ass man i'm 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 sorry i can't i i can't i can't do nothing with that yeah i feel i'm also worried like at some point they're so big they have to be hurting the woman that has to be causing back pain yeah i don't know i guess at my second job that will remain nameless. I, I, I do f- I feel, I mean, maybe it's the clientele, right? That they tend to gravitate more towards the, the larger chested women. That includes fake tits, which sure. maybe have the slight advantage because they don't hang to your knees, mm-hmm. I guess. I'm, I'm just, I don't know. I'm, I think the most attractive thing to me is to be just like a normal looking person. Jeep. <laughs> If I if if I'm gonna be if I'm gonna be honest and and I don't and I don't want and I don't want any of our our, our our female listeners to like to like think of this as being like weird or perverse or whatnot, but I've always liked athletic women, and I don't mean like you know like they look like they can be at a fitness physique show, you know, or a competitor mm-hmm. or in bodybuilding or whatnot, like you know like just just just. Just somebody, oh God, I don't want to say it because then it sounds so fucked up. I don't want to say like someone in shape, but you know what I mean. You know, like like someone with uh, like the healthy looking. If, well, healthy looking for okay. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, if you have a physique that someone would actually want to make a uh, like a stone sculpture out of, yes. Yeah, like a Greek statue, like like think think of think of that, like you know that that type of like physique or whatnot. I've always felt like that's always like been like the most 
ideal thing for me with women and stuff like that. Now, men, I have like a pretty broad spectrum. And I think that's because like on the Kinsey scale, I, I, I lean more to men than I do to women, even though like I'm bisexual. So I'm, I'm like a, I'm like a male, a, a, like, like a male seven and a female five, you know, <laughs> on the Kinsey scale or whatever, however you want to say it, whatever, you know, but, um, but yeah, but, uh, but I've always like I've always liked, you know, like the like the like like the natural looking like women and stuff like that, you know. Whereas Which dudes I'm kind of whereas sorry, dudes I'm oh, I was about to say whereas with dudes I'm kind of a hornball. Like you, you gotta be in you gotta be in good shape, you gotta be worked out, or you gotta be more or you can also be more natural and stuff like that. Like like high you know, standards. The, yeah, I I do. I, I I really do. I really do, and it's it, it's sad. I'm I'm also but Ron likes proportionate women, but he's a judgy bitch. <laughs> I am. I'm, uh, I like I like the the women that can do both. You know, they can dress it up or they can dress it down. Yeah, me too. Oh, I just I just wish more women would hear that because I feel like a a not a, a all, but I feel like a majority of women that get fake tits is because they think that's what will make them more attractive to whomever they're trying to attract. Let me tell you, I dated a girl. Is a bitch. With, I dated a girl with with fake tits before, and they do not feel real. Yeah, they don't. The they, don't. They, they don't. They don't. No, they one hundred percent don't. It felt like two bags of sand, just wet sand. Just. I feel like bags of sand. No, yeah. when you touch it. No, in like, no, all honesty, like men are not trying to rough, rough house like like boobies and stuff like that. So we turn around and say like, yeah, like they don't feel right in our hands and stuff like that. That's that should be a clue right there. Yeah. Jeez. Anyways, I guess, I guess the one thing that we can say that that you know like passed on to you know like stayed with us from when we were babies and stuff like that because like you see how kids are like re- you see how kids are really gentle with the boobs when they're nursing like yeah like <laughs> yeah we don't forget that um uh, matt would like to- <laughs> wait, 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 wait 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 are you saying your son is trying to t- trying to twist the titty off no, they oh, bite. No. They bite. Yeah. Oh, bite, biting is different. Biting is different. Yeah. I I said handling. I, I didn't. Um, I was gonna say my son made me bleed, but okay. That's I, biting, well, though, right? There have been times. No, it's there, there have been times when Aton is super, super hungry, and he goes at it like he goes at Reba like it's a high seed juice box where he's just he's a. Like, <sighs> knows what he wants mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. no i'm sure yeah. okay so i guess i can't speak for all the men out there i'm sorry i mean Aleron, what kind of man are you <laughs> but uh but yeah like she's had to train him to not bite mm. yeah, because okay. he got all he got all his teeth real early yeah um Ooh, mm-hmm Fighting. Um so boobies. Boobies. There's I'm something. going to I'm going to say this. I'm not averse to bigger boobs. I do agree that there's a ceiling on how big they can get or how big they should be. Or you know, and I, even then that's just judgy. More importantly is everything. Is the person carrying them? That's what I'll say. Because boobs don't make the woman. A booty don't make the woman. Good thighs don't make the woman. It helps. Sorry, continue. I didn't mean to perk up when you, you know, I, got me. And see, and I want to say you're wrong, but also I have totally acted on that principle too. As we discussed earlier in this episode. But there is an I there is an interesting thought that you know beauty is beauty, and it just it just it can just be who you already are rather than who you think you should be. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and Amen. not to not to extend this episode any further, but I think as I've gotten older, I've learned, you know, through mistakes to be honest, to appreciate who the person is over what they look like. 
And yep. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. All right. Amen. Well then, the more you know. Mm. Yep. <laughs> and on that note. We're going to go ahead and wrap it up. So uh, I always want to go ahead and thank everyone out there who's been watching or listening to Boss Rush After Dark. Remember, this is the alternative topical podcast for the for adults on the network. If you enjoy the show, please leave us a five-star rating and a nice review on, on podcast services or subscribe to the YouTube channel and like the video. Also, leave us a comment. Like I said, like I, I gave you guys a challenge. If you know where my line came from, like sound off in the comments, wherever you're, wherever you're checking us out at. Uh, and by the way, just remember, all the stuff that you do really helps us with our div- discoverability and visibility. Stephanie, Corey, Matt, y'all have been wonderful, as always. Axel! Axel! Poor thing just wants to sleep. <laughs> She's like, stop uh, waking right. me up, Mom. Any uh, any any parting words before before we sign it off? Because uh, I usually say something all the time, but I'm leaving it up to you guys this time. Remember, Luigi is the superior Mario brother. Hmm. That's true. That is true. I don't. I don't know if I have anything wise to say tonight. And while Luigi went wah 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 all the way home. <laughs> and on that note. Laughing Good night, everyone. Good night. If you want to see how you can become a Patreon producer, head on over to patreon.com slash boss rush network. The Patreon producers for this month are Adriel Munger, Austin Campbell, Celeste Roberts, Christian S, Sana Dierig, Francisco Santilan, Matthew Keel, and Todd Oxtra. Thanks for your continued support of the Boss Rush Network.